now present For the Record. Coming up this morning, we'll take a look at policies and celebrations around Pride Month. We've got this really amazing history of people who think you should have equal treatment for everyone, uh, and that's important for people to know. We'll also sit down with politicians working to increase trust in Wisconsin's elections. Welcome to For the Record. I'm Will Keneally in Fort Naomi Coles. We turn first to the state capitol, where a group of lawmakers have introduced a series of abortion-related bills. Among them is a law that would clarify what kind of procedures doctors could perform to save the life of the mother that wouldn't put doctors in jeopardy of the state's abortion ban. We're joined now by one of the bill's authors, Senator Romaine Quinn, who joins us from Cameron. Thanks so much for joining us. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. So you've billed these proposals as an embrace them both package. Uh, could you describe what that means? Yeah, that's always been the pro-life position, that we care about both the baby and the mother. So there's been a lot of criticism over the years, which I think are unfair, that Republicans are only, quote-unquote, pro-birth. Um, we want to support families. We want to support women. We want to support those babies and young children, both in the womb and after they're born. And so we just want to make it clear that we want to pass bills that embrace them both, both mother and child. So the top line there, you list a series of procedures that would be allowable under this bill. How did you arrive to those? So during the course of the campaign, uh, obviously it was, we are now a post Roe v. Uh, Wade world. There was a lot of rhetoric, a lot of misinformation, um, especially at the national level, that I think really scared people into what kind of access do or do I not have when it comes to possible medical emergencies when I'm carrying my child. And so we just want to make it crystal clear that the pro-life community has never considered the removal of a miscarriage or the removal of an eptopic pregnancy or those kinds of situations that threaten the life of the mother as an abortion. Because if you're not intentionally ending a human life, if you're not intentionally aborting that child, trying to end their life, that's not an abortion. And it's never been considered one from the pro-life community. So let's take it off the table. Let's make it crystal clear. Let's make sure there's no ambiguity and that physicians can treat women when, they're, when they have medical complications in those situations. So that's why we wanted to clarify and redefine this um, to make it clear for everyone, all parties. So I know we're still early in the process yet, but have you heard from any doctors, anybody from the medical community on these bills? Uh, not specifically, like you mentioned, we just dropped them this last week, but we did hear enough during the campaign and in and outside the Capitol that there's the current law, because of whatever reason, there's enough ambiguity where physicians are not comfortable performing certain procedures. So that's where this package of bills comes from. We just want to make it clear for them that they can provide the medical care they need, but with the caveat that they should do all they can to protect the life of both mother and baby at the same time. So in the bill, there's language that kind of makes a distinction between what the bill describes as intentionally killing an unborn child versus uh, any life-saving action that would just have that outcome. Uh, how will abortion providers' intention uh, be kind of demonstrated under this bill? And that's something we'll have to take case by case, but it's, uh, we use language and consultation with our attorneys and looked at other states as well, to, again, trying to make it as clear as possible that, for instance, if you have a mother that is diagnosed with some form of cancer and she needs to begin whatever form of treatment she needs that could compromise the life of her child, um, she should be allowed to get that medical care. She's not intentionally trying to compromise the life of her child, but she needs that to survive. And so the doctor should try to treat her, but being conscientious of the fact that there's still another patient in the womb and that we should do our best to care for both. And that's why, again, we call it uh, embrace them both legislation. I just wanted to make it clear that, you know, we are providing adoption support. We wanna provide tax credit for children in the womb to recognize that as soon as a family becomes pregnant, costs start today, not once the child's born. So we want to recognize and keep count them as a dependent for tax purposes while they're in the womb. And then we also want to uh, support pregnancy resource centers because they give a lot of help for single families, young families, unexpected families who find themselves in a pregnancy that uh, they may or may not want at the moment. But those resource centers are there to support them in their situation. So it's all, it's all encompassing. We don't just want to redefine what is or is not an abortion. We want to actually support families as they're carrying these children to term. So I want to turn to the politics now. We've seen other abortion measures fail. Democrats are largely advocating for a full repeal of the state's abortion ban. And any updates to the state's abortion law could also water down some arguments that they're making in a current lawsuit challenging the state's ban. Are you optimistic that this can pass? Well, I've always been an optimist. I would argue, even for those that are pro-choice, why would you not want to create more clarity? 
Why would you not want to give physicians more clarity? We can have the debates of when does life start? Is it conception? Is it six weeks, 12 weeks, 20 weeks? We can have those debates. But today, let's take off the table for women that fear if they miscarry, they can't go in um, and have the child removed or that can't receive treatment because um, they're currently pregnant. Let's take those situations off the table and then have that debate on when does life begin another day. Senator Romaine Quinn, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Coming up, Thursday marked the first day of Pride Month. We'll check in with Congressman Mark Pocan on LGBTQ issues facing Wisconsin and the country. We'll be right back. This portion of News 3 Now is sponsored by Madison Gas and Electric. It's a brand new day. Don't let junk get in the way. All you have to do is point. <laughs> and you'll be back to your old self again. <laughs> yeah! Call 1-800-GOT-JUNK. Or visit 1-800-GOT-JUNK.com. To everyone who appreciates a handcrafted meal, are you ready for a taste of Wisconsin? Butterburgers cooked fresh, just the way you like. The way you love. Definitely love. And our thick and creamy frozen custard, we make it for you all throughout the day. All day. All day, every day. Put it in the extra work and not cutting corners. It takes a little longer. But it's how we've always done it at Culver's. Because making your meal with care shows how much we care. From Wisconsin with love. Welcome to Delicious. Here's your parachute. Packed it myself. Certain it's okay? Mm hmm Are you foreign print certain? Certainty matters. Like the certainty of congratulating coworkers or saying thank you for being a customer with promotional products from 4imprint. Our expert team is dedicated to making your satisfaction a certainty. Talk to myself. Land the perfect products at 4imprint.com. 4imprint for certain. Announcing Madison Magazine's Best of Madison Readers Poll for 2023. Vote online today for Don's Home Furniture and Best Furniture, Best Home Accessories, and Best Outdoor Living. Vote for Don's Home Furniture, Best of Madison at madisonmagazine.com. Need life insurance? Select Quote found Jacob, 40, a $500,000 policy for only $19 a month. And Select Quote found his wife, Wendy, a $500,000 policy for only $17 a month. Select Quote. We shop, you save. It's a brand new day. Don't let junk get in the way. All you have to do is point. <laughs> and you'll be back to your old self again. <laughs> yeah! Call 1-800-GOT-JUNK. Or visit 1-800-GOT-JUNK.COM. Welcome back. Thursday, June 1st marked the beginning of Pride Month with celebrations of LGBTQ Wisconsinites. Governor Tony Evers marked the occasion raising the pride flag over the east wing of the state capitol. Raising the pride flag today sends a message for all those who've only ever wanted to belong, who've had to find their own family, who've never known home. You belong here. Inside the building, members of the state legislature's bipartisan LGBTQ caucus are planning on introducing a package of equality legislation. That includes repealing Wisconsin's ban on gay marriage, which was included in the state's constitution in 2006. The only way to repeal it is for the state legislature uh, to put a repeal on the ballot and give voters the opportunity to take that language out of our state constitution. And that's taken on new importance because of the Supreme Court ruling in Dobbs on abortion last year, where some of the uh, justices in the majority there hinted that they also wanted to overrule marriage equality. That's among a series of LGBTQ issues at the state capitol right now. Earlier this year, the Republican-controlled legislature blocked the Democratic governor from banning conversion therapy in Wisconsin. We spoke earlier this week with the co-chair of the Congressional Equality Caucus, Wisconsin Congressman Mark Pocan. We caught him on the heels of the vote to raise the country's debt ceiling and started by asking him about his no vote. So this was not so much a, a vote against compromise because uh, we've been saying for months that, you know, we should lift the debt ceiling. In fact, we shouldn't even have a vote to deal with this. That's a whole other conversation we should have uh, at some point. But the problem is a lot of the information wasn't forthcoming. Uh, we didn't know what uh, COVID rescissions were going to happen to the state of Wisconsin. Um, we couldn't see the side agreements, and much of it was in side agreements. In fact, $58 billion of funding for seniors and schools and health care and things like that uh, were not actually in the bill. It was a much lower spending bill 
but the side agreements have those, but we couldn't read the side agreements either. Um, all of that going into a vote, um, you know, just left a number of us, especially those of us on the Appropriations Committee and the Budget Committee. In fact, the ranking members of both of those committees voted against it for those reasons. Um, you know, we have the responsibility of spending uh, the government's money, uh, but if the details aren't there, it's really hard for us to look at that the closest to be able to proceed. Um, and I want to ask you too, obviously, when we were speaking earlier um, last month, earlier in May, uh, you're talking about how reckless it was to kind of mess with the debt ceiling, um, but on its face, you voted against raising the debt ceiling last night. Um, if you want to explain that vote at all. Yeah, we, we shouldn't have been in the place to have to do this. Uh, we've uh, lifted it something like 80 some times in our history, um, three times under President Trump without any fanfare. Uh, we didn't have to go through this. Uh, struggle and negotiation in order to do uh, what should be our responsibility. In fact, prior to uh, when I got to Congress, just before I got there, if you voted to spend the money, uh, you automatically lifted the debt ceiling. You didn't have a separate vote for a number of years. The fact that we have this uh, allows some people to just be able to create havoc in the system, and that's what happened. So out of it, we got this uh, unfortunate um, process that led us to a lot of questions about how we're going to be proceeding financially. So, you know, I, I was there for sure to lift the debt ceiling uh, because it's a no-brainer, uh, but the vote yesterday wasn't just doing that. The vote, unfortunately, um, was about a lot of cuts to things that people care about in Wisconsin, uh, as well as some other concerns about things that got added that had nothing to do with financial matters, but got thrown into a package that I think ultimately we're going to find more out down the road. And I don't think uh, the vote's going to sit well for a lot of people. Uh, I want to shift gears a little bit. We're recording this uh, Thursday morning, the first day of Pride Month. Um, this also marks the first Pride Month since last November, uh, where we now see divided control of government federally. I'm just kind of curious how that plays out in Congress there. So I think what we're seeing the most, there was an article in the New York Times a couple months ago about uh, folks uh, within the conservative political infrastructure throwing literally spaghetti on the wall to find out what's that next issue that they can give as red meat to the Republican base that's a socially conservative. And they found when they were throwing the spaghetti that uh, the issue of transgender uh, really had some resonance because most people don't know someone who's transgender, or at least they don't think they know someone who's transgender. And because of that, they can still breed fear and hate around that. So that's exactly what we've seen. I think almost 600 pieces of legislation in state legislatures around the country and Congress, uh, bills to ban trans girls from playing in sports to uh, affect the type of medical care they get, the decisions that their parents or doctors are making, government's trying to step in. Um, we're seeing a lot of legislation like that. And the unfortunate nature is it has a real impact. You know, this is politicians building their brand on these sorts of issues and bluntly fundraising off of these issues, punching down at kids who just want to play sports with their friends. And uh, we've had a lot of those fights in Congress, and I'm expecting that for probably the next year or so, uh, we'll have those. The good news, though, uh, is uh, like we saw with marriage equality. Uh, remember when every state was passing a law saying marriage is between a man or woman, and now 70 plus percent of the people understand there's no threat to their marriage. And if there is, they've got some other issues uh, over this. Uh, I think the same will happen uh, with the issue of folks who are transgender. Once you get to know someone and realize that a lot of this has just been fear that's been stoked uh, in order to make people do certain things, generally to vote a certain way, uh, I think we'll come out of it better. But it's a tough period right now uh, for, for folks who are trans, especially kids. And quite honestly, there's a lot of bleed over into the uh, gay and lesbian community as well that uh, is gonna also have to be felt for a little while. Uh, so here in Wisconsin, um, we see a little bit of a push-pull dynamic. Um, I think you could describe it as a little bit Dems uh, kind of pushing under a GOP-controlled legislature here uh, for some of these protections uh, where Republicans, obviously in the majority, are pushing for a little bit of more individual and local kind of control and discretion. We saw that play out here with a conversion therapy ban, uh, for example. In Congress, obviously now that Democrats are uh, the minority party in the House, uh, what can you kind of advocate for, what can you push for from that position? My job is to really make sure that we're getting the truth out there. You know, meet a trans uh, child, meet the parents of a trans child and talk to them what it's like for their daily existence, their kids getting bullied when politicians, quite honestly, are the only ones who are raising these issues. Um, you know, that's, I think, what we're doing right now. Maybe it's a bit defensive, but I think we're also putting out some really positive messages that hopefully will have long-term effects once we get out of this, you know, relatively dark period. 
When we come back, we sit down with politicians from both sides of the aisle working to increase trust in our elections here in Wisconsin. Barbara Lawton and Kathy Bernier join us after the break. The Memorial Day Super Sale at Denver Mattress has been extended. Right now, save 100 bucks on every thousand you spend. And check out the Summit Firm for only $299.99, plus six years no interest and free shipping. Hurry, the extended Memorial Day Super Sale at Denver Mattress ends soon. Do you have an idea for an invention, but you don't know what to do next? Call InventHelp. They've been helping inventors for 35 years. Call today for free information. Call 800-550-5543. Announcing Madison Magazine's Best of Madison Readers Poll for 2023. Vote for the Best of Madison online today, including Banting, Craftsman, and Design for Best Home Repair. Dream, Renovate, Create. Visit us online to start planning your remodel, addition, or new build with the best today. Announcing Madison Magazine's Best of Madison Readers Poll for 2023. Vote for the Best of Madison online today, including BB Jack's Cottage Grove for Best Bar Food, Chicken Wings, Late Night Menu, Patio, and Best Sports Bar. Vote today on MadisonMagazine.com. you fake wearing your seatbelt, remember this. Cops have been trained to spot seatbelt violations even at night. And they don't give out fake tickets. Day or night, click it or ticket. Can't get home in time to watch the news? News 3 Now is always on. Get Channel 3000 app now so you'll have all the day's top stories in the palm of your hand. The Channel 3000 app. Get it now. Powered by News 3 Now. The Memorial Day Super Sale at Denver Mattress has been extended. Right now, save 100 bucks on every thousand you spend. And check out the Summit Firm for only $299.99, plus six years no interest and free shipping. Hurry, the extended Memorial Day Super Sale at Denver Mattress ends soon. Welcome back. It's the old Ben Franklin quote when asked after appearing at the Constitutional Convention what kind of government we had. He responded, it's a republic if you can keep it. Now this coming week is the launch of the Wisconsin branch of a national group called Keep Our Republic. It's a bipartisan effort to instill faith in our elections. And joining us now are two members of the group of Wisconsin's Advisory Council, Barbara Lawton, the former Lieutenant Governor under Jim Doyle, and Kathy Bernier, a former state senator who led the Chamber's Election Committee during a tumultuous couple of years. Thank you both for joining us. My pleasure. My pleasure. Wonderful. So we're sitting down uh, on June of 2023, and I want to get a sense of why is it important to start these conversations now? I think it's really important because we have had a, a lot of tumult and a loss of trust in the legitimacy of our elections in Wisconsin in particular. This is sort of a frail democracy and we're working um, in launching a civic education project that will help people understand better what they can do and make sure that every person who's eligible can vote, that their vote counts, that the vote stands. And that, um, and that they are helping be part of this project across the state. Yeah, Senator Bernier, um, curious too, we're about um, a little less than a year out from the April presidential primary here in Wisconsin. Are people still even paying attention to this stuff right now? Well, our goal is to bring attention to it because um, we can't have what's happened in the last several years of calling into question our electoral system to delegitimizing um, our electoral system and or the individuals who were truly elected um, and undermined. So we have to make sure that the electorate understands the electoral process, um, have confidence in it, and that the vote stands. And I think you cannot start too early. Uh, Wisconsin is going to be um, in the eye of the nation um, as far as the battleground state. And we cannot have calls to decertify an election once it is fully certified and all of the legal uh, challenges have been made. Uh, it needs to stand and the um, winner um, needs to be supported. Um, and so I, I think that's our goal. And I think Barbara and I have been working together and will continue to work together um, throughout uh, through 2024. 
I want to ask too, uh, because we've seen a lot of questions being raised over the last couple of years, uh, just get a sense of like what the day-to-day -day will look like, um, especially in your advisory roles. Uh, Senator, do you have a sense of kind of what the product is going to be from this advisory council? Well, um, it's not a one size fits all. Keep Our Republic has a mission and we're going to stick with that mission, but we're gonna customize the, um, that mission um, for Wisconsin. And so uh, they're focusing, our focus with Keep Our Republic is um, in Pennsylvania, Michigan and Wisconsin. And so I'm going to, as the state director, bring the advisory council together. Um, our goal is to hopefully um, bring us together in August as a group and then we're going to go out with one voice and unity um, with that voice on what um, we're going to do um, involving um, educating our public and that may be involving clergy, sheriffs, police association, county association. Um, we have a plan to do that. Um, we're fairly new so um, we are going to ebb and flow a little bit um, but the advisory council is going to help me um, with uh, our mission and our and our educational opportunities. Hopefully, um, the media will also help us out. Certainly. Um, so I also want to ask too. It seems like a tall order, especially with some of the questions that we've seen over the last couple of yeah. years. Um, is it possible to uh, kind of get that confidence back in, especially Wisconsin's election ahead of that April presidential primary? I think it is. I think that the design that Keep Our Republic has put forward for these for state um, councils to start and launch is brilliant. I mean, we are profoundly nonpartisan or bipartisan in our composition. There's a wide range of perspectives, former elected officials, former U.S. attorney, people who have expertise in elections in different ways. But we are, we ha so we may all have different points of view on a variety of other public policy issues, but we are one in this. And it's a deep level of patriotism and concern for preserving our republic and our democracy. So I, I think that the focus on it being very local and finding ways to help people come together, have dialogue, and understand the risks, the emerging risks, the ones that we already know about, the threats to our election officials, um, all of that. Senator, I want to turn to you, tap to your expertise as being a local elections official. Um, one of my favorite anecdotes was a few years ago, um, I was interviewing the town clerk in Fulton Township in Rock County. Um, and I show up to her office and she kind of pops up and says, hey, are you here for a dog license? Um, it's fascinating to me to kind of understand that the people that actually run the elections here in Wisconsin um, do everything from uh, licensing people's dogs. Um, so especially you obviously being the um, county clerk at that point, a step higher, um, can you describe just kind of what the day-to-day -day life is like for a local election official? So as a county clerk, I issued all the dog license out to the municipal clerks or actually treasurers uh, um, as well. So, um, and did marriage license and a number of other things. Um, but that's, that's okay because elections are intermittent. It seems like they're ongoing, especially in the cycle where you have four elections, uh, two primaries and two generals in one year. Um, but I wouldn't have it any other way. In most states, they hire, um, they have county clerks that run the elections from bottom up, election day activity and all of that. In Wisconsin and Michigan um, in particular, the only two states where you have municipal clerks um, that actually run the election day activity and the electronic systems and all of that. But they have skin in the game. They have a commitment to their voters um, their com community. And so I think that's a good thing. Um, with, if as a county clerk, I would have to go out in, and um, hire precinct um, workers um, and not having a good connection with them throughout the year for other purposes, such as dog licenses, um, then, um, then I think it would be even more of a challenge. So I think that's one reason, just one of the reasons why our electorate here in the state of Wisconsin should have a great deal of faith in our electoral system because we have municipal clerks who are either elected or hired um, by their local communities 
making sure that that system is working well. Yeah, Senator, Lieutenant Governor, thank you so much. The legislature's powerful budget writing committee voted to approve and reject many building projects on the UW system campuses. We'll hear from system president Jay Rothman when we return. As a veteran of our country's armed services, you have already made the ultimate sacrifice. Through no fault of your own, you may be experiencing hardships, such as the inability to pay rent, utilities, or receive other life-sustaining services. The Veterans Rental Assistance Program was created by and for people living in Wisconsin. No Wisconsin veteran should ever have to face homelessness or lose heat, power, or water again. You've been counting the days, weeks, months, just waiting. Because the Memorial Day Super Sale at Denver Mattress has been extended. Right now, the more you buy, the more you save. Save 100 bucks on every 1000 you spend. And check out the Summit Firm for only $299.99. Or save up to $500 on select Denver Pedic adjustable mattress sets and get a free $300 gift. Plus six years no interest and free shipping. Hurry, the extended Memorial Day Super Sale at Denver Mattress ends soon. Everlight Solar is the premier home solar company in the Midwest and a proud partner of Wisconsin Athletics. We make going solar simple and affordable with zero dollars down. To learn more about solar for your home or see our employment opportunities, visit everlightsolar.com. Need life insurance? Select Quote found Jacob 40, a $500,000 policy for only $19 a month. And Select Quote found his wife Wendy, a $500,000 policy for only $17 a month. Select Quote. We shop, you save. You got me. Ty, you're it. Imagine a world with no drama. With 4imprint, you don't have to chase down the perfect promotional products. Exclusive apparel, bags, drinkware, and more. 4imprint will help you capture the moment and guarantee to deliver your order on time and on budget. Take the drama out of ordering promotional products at 4imprint.com. 4imprint for certain. Finally this morning, the legislature's Budget Writing Joint Finance Committee took a vote on statewide building projects that include significant investments in UW system buildings. On the Madison campus, that includes improvements for Camp Randall, but we didn't see any money go toward renovating the school's engineering building. UW system president Jay Rothman was disappointed by that move. From my experience in the private sector, I've seen that time and time again. We want to have the capacity in the state in order to have enough graduates to fill the job needs of Wisconsin employers. And that's why all of the building projects that we had on, on the table uh, that the committee considered uh, last evening uh, are important. The committee will continue its work next week, taking up the budgets for transportation, corrections, and other state agencies. Thanks for joining us. I'm Will Keneally, 